And uh, if somebody else, a lot of times people say, oh, you're the skinwalker expert. Well, I'm not an expert. I, can, I, I know really well what's taken place since 2016, but as far as the history of the ranch, uh, I grew up in the Una Basin. Uh, about, I live about 15 miles away from it. And we are about, one, we're the, the next exit is the middle of nowhere. So we're right before the middle of nowhere if you try to go out and find the ranch. And so I, I, it's famous out where we're from. I knew about it, but uh, as I had heard the, the big stories, but knowing the history and the chronology and the, the events that have taken place, I, I haven't. And to be honest, I, I hadn't ever watched any of the movies or read any of the books. Um, and so with that, uh, brings us to Ryan because Ryan is an individual that has really dived in. He's done a lot of research, interviewed a lot of people, and uh, he predates when the three of us came on. Um, and, and he's been a valuable uh, friend of the ranch that has helped us kind of bridge the two uh, eras the Bigelow era and then the Adamantium era. Yeah, I consider myself more of a fanatic of the ranch and a I guess devotee to whatever is going on out there as it has beyond impressed me as to the validity of this hidden reality that exists beyond us that we're not aware of. And uh, it left such a lasting impression upon me that it created this obsession that is still fueled to this day. So I'm from Wisconsin originally. Everything's kind of plains and valleys and corn and cows. And just for me to see the I guess the beauty of the endless canyons and the moonlit night in the sky, uh, I flew over on the side and just really took in the beauty and depth of Utah. And I shouted out to the canyon, which is just odd to me in retrospect, you know, I am here. <laughs> which, uh, I, again, I, to this day, I don't know why. I announced my presence. And it's almost as if something heard me and responded to me. Car, she says, there's three people coming towards the car, three shadow people. And that just shatters the moment uh, of that frozen time for me. And I get in the car and take off. Uh, there's a lot more to that story that happened. Uh, kind of funny part, I wanna kind of get through it quickly. We do end up pulling over on the side of the road and uh, she's, she's Russian and there's kind of a cavalier and strong <laughs> personality to some of these Russian women that I noticed. And she said, she said, right, you know, and I'm just, I'm an absolute wreck. You know, what was that? Oh my God, what did we just see? <laughs> and she goes, what are you doing? You know, you've always shown an interest in this stuff. You need to stop what you're doing, and this is what you've been looking for your whole life. You, you need to turn the car around and go back there. And I'll tell you, in my mind at that time, that was the very last thing that I wanted to do. I just wanted to go to, <laughs> to Vegas, get married, and come back to Wisconsin. And, I mean, just begrudgingly, I'm like, oh, the logic is, she's right. She's absolutely right. This is what I've been subconsciously looking for for all these years, and I will never know, and that's one opportunity I have. We turned the car around, came back to the location. The lights did come back up to the car. Um, I'm paraphrasing a very long story, and it, I've never had this experience at the ranch, but it transformed into three transparent gray aliens that were staring directly at us. Um, I remember rolling the window down in a state of, I, again, a state of shock, having never seen this before, having no idea what I'm looking at, what potential harm it could cause to me, and I, I, I don't mean you any harm, I'm trying to communicate with it. it, there's no response. And I remember as I'm saying this silly gibberish, <laughs> meaningless gibberish to whatever it is, whatever unknown presence from wherever it traveled from, as I'm, doing this diatribe, it, one of the ones in the middle, and they're frozen like statues, it turns its head kind of like a dog would if you were to explain a command to a dog. And again, <laughs> that American fear versus her Russian pride kicked in and I jumped in, the, I hit that uh, gas pedal as hard as I could and I didn't look back this time, no matter what she was saying. Now the point of the story is, this left such a deep impact on me. I reached out to MUFON, I reached out to Utah UFO investigators, every possible uh, forum out there I could and didn't receive a reply and I knew this was real. It left a deep scarring impression on me and I wanted answers. Why, why this location? And once I got back home, I got on the internet and I searched and I found Skinwalker Ranch in the book by George Knapp's Hunt for the Skinwalker. 
was a mere 20 to 30 miles as a crow flies to the north. And I guess the rest is history. I had to find out everything I could about this place. And, and it was much more than, things much more dramatic have happened there than what happened on the side of the road that day. Uh, I'm gonna pivot just a little bit with you. Um, security has played an important part of the ranch for the last couple decades. Uh, share with us what your job entails, why we even have security, and, and touch on the Bigelow era and, the, and what security measures were taken then. So securing 512 acres in the middle of nowhere from people like Brian Skinner, not an easy job. Um, when I first came on um, as head of security, before you know we actually became associated with Brian, it was kind of Brian Skinner's public enemy number one. Watch out for him. If he's in town, he's going to try and sneak on the ranch and do all this different kind of stuff because, uh, and he did. <laughs> and because previously, um, previous ownership, Robert Bigelow, he didn't want, he wanted to investigate the place and do whatever it was that he was doing keep it all to himself. I mean, 20 years of Robert Bigelow owning Skinwalker Ranch, there is next to no information that's come out of it unless it was through George Knapp, who is his buddy, who he lets do all of his press releases and things like that. So it was very, you know, scrubbed and made sure that we'll give you a little, you know, idea here type of a situation. Um, and so we inherited really nothing. I really think we're just scratching the surface. Um, there's, I think the veil is very thin out there, uh, especially, especially with some people where I think they're more, maybe more transparent than others. But um, that ranch to me is, is a phenomenon. Uh, it, it's something that I go out there very gently. I embrace it with a level of humility. I go in there with a lot of prayer in and out. But there's things that, that I cannot disclose right now, but uh, hopefully uh, as the episodes start to move forward, we can be a little bit, create a little bit more disclosure to you. But it's the real deal. So I'm excited about uh, sharing some of these opportunities with you. And I can tell you watching the episode, I just had you know, an emotional reaction to it. I uh, obviously I'm in a pretty emotionally fragile state based on what Tom alluded to happened uh, just last night at my house, but it reinforced the reason why I needed to stay here and support the team and share the story with all of you guys. You know, what you're seeing there is not just some TV show to raise money or to create some sort of entertainment and to hoax things. You know, it is the real deal out there. That is the reason why 14 years later I'm still here and I hope to be here another 14 years until this mystery, hopefully before then, <laughs> is solved. And I'm just, uh, I'm blessed and I'm grateful for all of you guys to hear our stories and, and to participate in this. So uh, we had the observation period and after we determined there was something going on, the discussion turned to, okay, there is something going on. Now how do we go about investigating it? And do we share what we're finding? Different philosophies on that, obviously. Um, you know, I think because Bigelow took government money, that's all classified and he can't share it. Uh, you know, that's just a theory, but uh, we, we had a pretty robust discussion of the pros and cons of do we release what we're seeing or do we keep it quiet? And uh, the one thing that I, that I really admire the owner for is, is uh, said, I, I don't see any benefit to keeping this to ourselves. As long as it's done responsibly, uh, I, I believe that this, belong, this information belongs to the world. And so then the, the discussion turned to how do we go about releasing that. This show is the result of that. And I think the thing that makes this show so special is, is that um, the, the network has been very good to allow us. Uh, it's not scripted. And basically the story is they're gonna come along for the ride. If nothing happens, that's a story as well. But uh, fortunately, the, the ranch likes to show off, and, uh, and so uh, what, what you guys are going to see is that, that it's real, it's unscripted, 
and it's our efforts to start to peel back the curtain and share the secret of Skinwalker Ranch, and we're, we're on that uh, journey ourselves of trying to discover that. And I think it's become personal to each one of us for our own different reasons, and I know it has for me. I, I wanna understand what happened and, and if it's affecting other people. 